Hello, and welcome to the first episode of the Crystalline Ranger Backyard Tips. Today, I am spring cleaning my supply pond, or stock pond. Also, my children's discovery center. They help the critters here experience disturbance. In nature, most organisms have a range of tolerance for different types of disturbance. So today, as you can see, I'm creating quite a bit of disturbance. First, we're giving a flush from the bottom to the top with a hose. This is an seven or 800 gallon stock tank that's been a learning and uh, supply pond for, oh gosh, seven years. You can also drain from the bottom. However, it's been about three years since I've done any maintenance to this pond. And when I went to drain from the bottom, I discovered that the benthic ecosystem, which is the soil, life, and water at the bottom of a water body, is so stable and developed that it would actually be bad for this little system to have disturbance from the bottom like that. So I'm just gonna go around with the hose and kind of flush everything out. The smaller a body of water is, or the smaller an ecosystem of any type is for that matter, uh, the less stability it has in general, especially in terms of your range of chemical parameters such as dissolved oxygen or pH. In a small system, small disturbances can create large swings in your pH, dissolved oxygen, and other physiochemical parameters. So when you're introducing disturbance to your back backyard pond, you need to consider how long you've had this pond, how well established it is, and especially how large it is. And you want to tailor the amount of disturbance in any one setting according to those and many other factors. So for today, what I'm doing is dividing these right here. These are Nymphoides aquatica. It's an American water lily. And they should be divided, any, I don't know, I'd say every two to four years. You take out the babies. Here's a little baby right here. And you put them in pots with rocks. Usually I like to use clay pots such as these over here because they add some weight. There are special ceramic pots that you can get that have splits along the sides and those often are for aquatic plants. And then you can put various rocks in there to help hold them down because as you can see, naturally they float when they're disturbed and that's a dispersal mechanism. And it is actually around this time of year I'm a little late, February, early March, pushing it, but usually February when the sun is just so bright hitting the water, the trees haven't quite yet filled out and so lots of sun is getting down to the surface of the water. And these aquatic plants take advantage and they get very productive, both in root production, reproduction, and of course leaves so that they can photosynthesize. Another plant that takes off like crazy in Florida this time of year, well, north central Florida, this is called eelgrass, and you might have seen it in places like Itchituckney Springs or some of the other uh, less disturbed spring systems in this area. And they just put out babies like crazy, and they do baby chains. And you can just reach down into the water and follow those chains until you find where they come out of the benthos, as we call it, and then you break it off. I put them in a bucket here, and I am going to put them in little tiny ceramic pots. Thank you for joining me for this very first episode of the Crystalline Ranger Backyard Ecosystem Enhancement.